uh, Daniel, uh, over to you. Uh, and you want to be our cloud pilot. So, um, yeah, we will leave you alone and uh, enjoy. Okay, I'm well prepared for a few second delay. So I'll just wait until it kicks in. But it looks good. Okay. So um, let me be your cloud pilot for today. And um, most of you probably had the picture of one of those nice looking guys sitting in front of an airplane um, and basically uh, hauling people from A to B. Um, but the better picture is actually the pilot boat that, that helps uh, navigating big cruise ships in unknown harbors uh, to actually find the spot they want to end up with and not hitting, hitting any, any undepths or uh, hitting the pier. So I hope I can help you actually uh, nav navigating the Atlassian Cloud, especially in regards to GDPR compliance today. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, we have a chat uh, running by, but just like following the chat at the same time as speaking is uh, not as convenient as with other scaring, uh, screen sharing tools. So we'll be in the business session afterwards. And if you have any, let's say, business related or commercial related questions, just come over to the business session. If it's any technical related question, just come over to the uh, technical session, and I'm pretty sure that you're being helped with. My name is Daniel Meisen. I'm co-founder or shareholder and co-CEO of Kreuzberger, uh, same as Demicon. We are a Atlassian Platinum Solution Partner. Um, we do support our customers in, uh, in building Atlassian stacks, growing them, customizing them, uh, training people to use them and also do migrations on all sorts of platforms. Uh, I'm an Atlassian expert by heart, even though they rebranded the program a few years back, I still consider myself an Atlassian expert. I am a Atlassian certified instructor and professional, and I'm using the tool uh, way uh, longer than Atlassian Cloud was actually a thing. So um, uh, Jira from version two EAP and Confluence from version one. Um, so let's follow it less into the journey to cloud. I mean, Lars uh, has already shared some uh, some brief statements of, of why the journey to cloud might be the right point in time for Atlassian and why you might want to follow now or later or even not follow. But this is something that we'll look into more details now. Um, what Atlassian actually has announced uh, in brief detail is end of support for their server license type. So no perpetual license for on-prem offerings anymore. Um, uh, starting uh, February 20, uh, 2014 by um, uh, end of server license renewal starting more or less um, uh, yeah, next year. You have to be aware of price adjustments, but you can still continue um, uh, to use the tools until uh, 2024. For uh, data center, there is a feature change uh, announced as well as price adjustment. And Atlassian has at the same time invested heavily in what they call cloud enablement. So a lot of resources around the cloud products and, and how to get from A to B. Um, so for Jira server um, and all the other um, on-prem offerings, um, you are still able to buy licenses if you're an existing customer up until February 2nd, 2014. Um, if you are a new customer, latest time uh, or last time you can buy licenses is actually uh, February 2nd next year. And Lessing will support the platform uh, until uh, 2022 and will actually roll out changes um, for platform related changes. And afterwards, for the last two years, it will only be security and bug fixes. So no new feature, no Java or database changes. And the price adjustments are more or less effective February 2nd. In data center, um, Atlassian has repackaged the core products a little, meaning that uh, Jira software will include roadmaps, Confluence um, will include uh, team calendars and analytics, and Jira service desk, which has recently been rebranded to Jira Service Management um, will include inside asset management and inside discovery. This all goes along with including uh, priority support and all data center subscriptions. And uh, at the same time, price adjustments are effective February next year. Um, Bamboo will also be available as a data center subscription somewhere later next year. Um, until then, it will only be available as a server uh, license at the moment. So what deployment options did Atlassian uh, has uh, and, and, and still have today? So basically there is Atlassian Cloud. Um, Atlassian Cloud is the native Atlassian Cloud offering um, across different plans provided by Atlassian, hosted by Atlassian, 
um, with you being an admin and user of the tools uh, provided in a, in a software as a service fashion. Um, we also had two different um, self-managed um, deployment options, server and data center. Server will be going away eventually. And as uh, Lars mentioned, there's no, no need to hurry. Um, there's actually uh, three more years of, of uh, um, uh, in-depth planning and, and time to actually plan where you want to migrate to. Um, with the options, um, at, at least for larger customers, um, uh, starting at 500 users, to still continue running on-prem uh, with data center licenses. So your migration options, um, depending on where you are now, is always obviously to migrate to the Atlassian Cloud now or later, depending on, on what your compliance or technical requirements are. Um, you can still continue to use uh, your existing data center licenses, or you can uh, convert to data center licenses if you are, let's say, in a commercially um, attractive tire, meaning that um, if you have less than 500 users, um, converting to data center licenses might not be an option now. So you could continue to use um, server licenses for another year and just assess um, what actually the Atlassian Cloud has in for you and then plan your migration well ahead um, and make sure that all the blockers um, are actually unblocked um, and you're on a good path to, to actually migrate to, uh, to Atlassian Cloud or um, eventually to another tool if there is no, um, if, if you don't find any fit in the Atlassian Cloud. But this is something that we're um, more than interested in to, to learn what actually blocks you from, from using the cloud uh, currently and uh, probably also in the future. Yeah. And Lessin also has rolled out um, some incentives and discounts. Um, so as, uh, as well known from the server licenses so far, there's academic and uh, community pricing that is not a 100% discount, but a 50 to 75% uh, discount. Um, the use for open source projects uh, remains free as well as the uh, less than 10 user tire to just like get around the tools and play around with them a little um, with uh, some restrictions in regards to functionality. For any other customer who holds an active uh, server license with maintenance or an active uh, data center subscription, there's cloud loyalty and data center loyalty discounts. Um, that basically give you uh, some more attractive rates in regards to switching to either cloud or data center. And there's free migration trials or dual licensing um, that allows you to use uh, an Atlassian cloud instance at the same time without being charged um, uh, double, basically. So let's look at the different cloud plans. Um, I mean, everyone is well aware of the free plan that, it, that allows the use of the tools um, with less than 10 users. Um, uh, there's a certain limitation on, uh, on the storage that you have. Um, so the, the more attractive plan to an actual commercial use might be the standard plan, which is good for up to 10,000 users, includes one site and the standard cloud functionality. Um, the only limit here is the 250 gigs, which might um, be a blocker for certain users. And that's where premium comes into play. Same feature as a standard, but comes with an uptime SLA um, or guaranteed uptime, 24-7 um, premium support, and certain additional functionality, such as allow listing, um, cloud sandbox, archiving, and unlimited storage. The newest plan that has been recently uh, made generally available is the enterprise plan that again includes all the premium features plus um, uh, unlimited, in, unlimited instances, uh, multi-site uh, administration and, and organizational insights, and uh, some features specifically tailored for enterprises such as enterprise sandbox and enterprise support. And the only thing that um, uh, is currently available in, in enterprises data residency, um, but this is something that might be available in other plans as well. I'll come to that in a second. What Lessing means um, when talking about cloud enablement is basically bringing, bringing you or putting you in the, in the pilot position to, to actually navigate at Lessing's cloud offering. Um, and this includes um, an Atlassian migration program and migration center that includes, uh, includes a lot of resources and material on, on how to migrate to the cloud, um, how a migration process usually looks like, what the different steps are, what tooling is required, and, and what steps you actually have to take 
um, to get from your existing server data center um, uh, instance or installation, including all apps and customizations um, into the cloud. Um, if there is certain blockers or, or functionality you're currently missing in cloud, um, there is the Atlassian Cloud and Data Center Roadmap that contains an, an, a very transparent overview uh, of what features Atlassian is adding over time. There's also the Atlassian Cloud Data Center, uh, Cloud and Data Center loyalty discounts that I just mentioned, plus there's dedicated support for migrations and Atlassian has heavily invested in, uh, in, in so-called cloud migration assistance which is basically apps that you can install in Jira Confluence that run an assessment in the background and tell you what apps you have installed and um, how they're being used. So the resources, resources in detail, um, as I mentioned, include a cloud roadmap um, that gives you uh, an, an overview of current and future improvements on Atlassian Cloud. Um, there's the Cloud Migration Hub, um, which will basically give you an overview of um, a typical migration process, including um, what migration options you have and, and what tooling is available for you and, and where you can find support um, if someone is not going um, as expected. And there's also a so-called cloud myth busting site um, because the, the Atlassian Cloud is a fast moving target and there's a lot of changes um, being applied to uh, the Atlassian Cloud over time. Um, so there's definitely certain things and, and certain misconceptions that might have settled with certain users um, that are being busted in, in this cloud myth busting site that will just like um, clarify certain things in regards to security and compliance or the app usage or data management, for example. What you can also do just like to, to get a rough estimate of what that commercially means for you is run the uh, cloud value calculator, which not only compares um, license costs with, with, with each other, but basically does a total cost of ownership comparison for the different tools um, that you can just use to, to assess the cost difference between something like a 250 user uh, Jira software server instance versus cloud standard, for example. The more interesting topic, especially for German and, and European users, is um, uh, to what degree is the Atlassian Cloud GDPR compliant? And this became more prevalent in, in the recent um, news that the privacy shield has been invalidated. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, but we've been researching this very well and have been in touch with a lot of lawyers and, and also the Atlassian legal team. So it's not completely made up. Um, what you currently get from Atlassian is a standard DPI, DPA, like data processing addendum, including standard contractual clauses um, that covers data subjects, categories of data, purpose of processing, subprocessors, and the duties based on articles 30, uh, 32 to 36. So this is all covered and already brings you in a good position in, in regards or on your way uh, to achieving GDPR compliance for any software as a service tools. Um, what you actually want, in addition to this, is something like data protection by default. Um, you want to know the details about data residency controls, and they differ by plan. Um, so you actually have to carefully look what plan you're eyeing at, um, and then uh, run the data protection impact assessment based on that particular plan and tools, um, such as Jira or Confluence Cloud Standard or Premium. And you have to assess uh, what content is actually locked per realm. So if there is, uh, assuming you're on, a uh, on, on an enterprise plan and have data residency set to, uh, to Europe, there might still be certain, um, uh, certain da data that, that might still be transferred to the US, for example, um, uh, centralized account data on these kind of things. So these are all certain things that, um, that you have to investigate yourself by using additional documentation that Atlassian provides. Um, in addition to the data, uh, data processing addendum, this is the cloud terms of service, the privacy policies, um, the Atlassian Trust Center um, with an overview of current certifications uh, such as IPO 27K or SOC 2. Um, in addition to that, um, the Atlassian Common Controls Framework and the documentation on data residency. If you are, let's say, um, outside of the average user space um, and work in, an, in, in any sort of highly regulated environment, may it be finance or insurance um, that is uh, regulated by BaFin, the German Financial Regulatory Board, or um, if you're in healthcare, or just have very uh, industry-specific uh, compliance requirements, uh, such as TSARCs uh, in, in automotive, for example, 
Um, or if you intend to, to have a multi-geography use um, in uh, any of the free standard or premium plans, this is something you have to uh, have an eye on, especially in combination with uh, any third party apps. Because the moment, at uh, the moment, the, uh, the, the, the only way for add-on vendors to process data outside of the tools is by doing it themselves, um, meaning that there might be additional data processing addendums required with certain vendors. So this is also something uh, that Atlassian is aware of and uh, Forge, uh, which has also been recently announced um, as becoming out of beta, um, uh, is a framework that can solve this, but it will take a long time and it will definitely not solve the problem for all the add-ons. So you still remain um, uh, reliable for actually assessing the uh, data processing use of your certain add-ons. Um, I briefly mentioned that Privacy Shield has invalidated, ba basically um, uh, invalidating uh, any legal grounds for transferring personal data between the EU and the US. Um, uh, at the same time, the standard contract clauses have been validated or con confirmed to be a valid, me valid mechanism for data transfers, um, but only in combination with certain binding corporate rules, so-called BCRs. Um, and this is something that, that you only achieve by actually running an assessment your own. Um, and uh, currently, the, the assessment and the outcome um, is quite complex, um, depending on what plan you're on. So with data residency controls um, in enterprise, it's somewhat easier. But there are certain two features um, with Atlassian um, that, um, that, that you should actually wait for at least, keep an eye on if you're not aiming for the enterprise plan, which is data residency controls, which might be available in premium or standard plans in the future. So this is something where Atlassian will definitely uh, catch up. Uh, no promise here, but this is something Atlassian is well aware of, and I expect this to change in the future. Second thing is enterprise key management or bring your own key, um, which means that uh, at the moment data in cloud is encrypted at rest and in transit, but still um, it would be better if not Atlassian owns the key to that data, but you as the customer. And this is also something that has been on the cloud roadmap so far. Um, and uh, this is something where we're also eyeing uh, very closely when this will be made available, um, not only within the enterprise plan, but maybe even in other plans. So that being said, Atlassian has invested heavily in, uh, in its current cloud native offerings um, with a wide selection of different plans, um, standard, premium, and enterprise with different features tailored to different audiences. Um, at the moment, GDPR compliance can be assumed on uh, standard contract clauses and the additional certifications of binding corporate rules, but an individual ass assessment is required. And having something like uh, data residency controls and enterprise key management or bring your own key definitely helps achieving that um, and uh, um, making the, the individual assessment a bit easier than, than it would be without. Plus, uh, in highly regulated environments, finance, insurance, you name it, um, there might still be regulatory changes, um, but this is also something that, that can be expected uh, to be changed in the future. With that being said, um, I'll thank you very much for listening. As I said, um, there's no Q&A in here at the moment, um, but uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer your questions in one of the uh, sessions. Um, if it's the business sessions, I will be there. Uh, if it's the technical sessions, then there's plenty of other people helping you along. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Jörg or Kumala Tech in that regard. Yeah, I am back again.